the globalists are taking the gloves off. So are we. Again, I, I think Adam's a good guy. Uh, people need to know what they're getting into on this. It's your right to do this, but the globalists are criminals. And they're known to beat people up on video and then frame you for attacking them. And they've got juries so evil that a cop can shoot you in the head five times, hack you up with a hatchet, barbecue your flesh, and they'll call that an assault on him if he didn't like the flavor of your meat. And I'm not even hardly being satirical. How many times have you seen video of them beat somebody up and then charge you with resisting? I've seen cases where they say they hurt their fist punching you. So, you know, you hit me, bam, break your nose. You know, Syria, how dare Syria say it's not nice, we're bombing them. They're actually saying that on the news right now. And the jihadis are joining forces hacking America. Oh, Al Gore's got $200 million in the bank. On and on and on while they rape us. The globalists are raping us. So I, I got a stew on this because I, 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 I haven't personally done this because maybe the time wasn't right over the years. Plus, I saw a provocateur back in the mid-90s do this, a famous lady who put out hoaxes about FEMA camps and stuff. I don't think he's a bad guy, Adam Kokesh. Adam Kokesh, I think, is for real. Uh, and they can spin this a thousand different ways, but uh, fortune favors the bold, and our fortune is liberty. Look at this Alexander Schultz and Eason quote. I mean, people got mad at me yelling at Piers Morgan. I mean, uh, Paul Revere was calling for killing Redcoats. So I guess just America is radical. I mean, how can you say, hey, I'm an American, I'm hardcore, but then not say, well, Kokesh, you know, that, you, you know that's an American idea. Here's our guns. We have a right. It's pure civil rights. And sure, the enemy can do all sorts of stuff. And I know Lou Rockwell's got a long view. I, I agree with both guys because <clears throat> there's multifacets to everything. We'll debate this more tomorrow and on the nightly news tonight. I'll be hosting it live 7 o'clock Central. Alexander Schultz and Eatson. And how we burned in the camps later, thinking what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, they were they arrested about half the city and put, sent them to camps, Stalingrad, or it was Leningrad at the time, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family every time a security operative crept out. Or if during periods of mass arrest, as the example in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, it was like a half later, People had not simply sat there in their lairs, pawing with terror at every bang on the doorstep, the downstairs door, and at every step on the staircase, but had understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. They didn't even have guns because the Soviets had first taken over and took the guns and then decades later did all this. The organs would have very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt if, if we didn't love freedom enough, and even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. We were purely and simply deserved everything that happened afterwards. Alexander Schultz and Eatson. Because they killed, the numbers vary, about half the people they took to the camp. They rape people's wives in front of them. Just the worst scum turned loose. And I'm telling you, in Obama's own Weatherman documents that came out in court, I've played the clips, they dream of breaking our families up and hurting our kids and our wives. That's who they are. I mean, these people are hardcore authoritarians. Look at the torture. Look at them funding al-Qaeda to kill Christians in Libya and Syria. They are the worst of the worst of the worst. And we are boldly resisting them. And if you don't support Infowars.com and the, and the news shows, if you don't subscribe to PrisonPlanet.tv, if you don't spread the word about the broadcast, if you don't buy Infowars magazine in bulk, it's at cost, with three bumper stickers to put up in your area, like the French Resistance, and let them know that we're awake to them. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound 
When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com all right, we got a lot of new breaking news up at InfoWars.com. Radio host to lead armed march on D.C. July 4th to put government on notice. He said things like it's an armed revolt. Uh, he said things, um, I, mean, I mean, he said a lot. We need to probably get the quotes out of that and add them to this article. He said, quote, this is an armed revolt. Uh, he said that uh, this is a uh, overthrow of the government. And he means politically by showing what they're doing, clearly using inflammatory language to get as much media attention as possible. Um, but um, I don't know what to say. I mean, I support open carry, and I can only admire the courage. I've got some problems with it because I know what the enemy can do. But, you know, if you start letting what the enemy can do back to you, control everything, I've just found charging in usually gets things done. At the same time... It is fraught with issues. So I would just tell people, uh, I would not bring your children to this, <laughs> to uh, say the least. And I'll, I'll think about it more when the show ends today than I'm doing the nightly news. I'll think about it more. And tonight, 7 o'clock, hosting live. Uh, there's been some taped interviews they're doing, too. But I'm going to, more and more, we're doing InfoWars Nightly News live, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, but uh, here's some of the news up at InfoWars.com. Uh, I've got a special report we're going to air that's got the Dan Badandi interviews with people in Boston that were violated in the, in the martial law lockdown that ties in with a um, MSNBC host saying that Ron Paul's a liar about it being martial law. It was martial law by any stretch of the imagination where everyone is a suspect, and, except government, who's the prime suspect. I mean, we're done. The government tortures kids in front of their parents in Iraq. We're done. It's an illegal government. It's criminals. Uh, radio host to lead armed march on D.C. July 4th to put government on notice. 60 minutes propaganda, counterinsurgency cops in Massachusetts. Yeah, they now have counterinsurgency cops on 60 minutes, calling the citizens the insurgency. See, they're ready for it. They want it. I mean, this is a bad, bad government. U.S. Senator Big Sis ammo buy to dry up supply. That's Senator Inhofe. Source, Israeli airstrike on Syria, coordinated with Al-Qaeda militants. Unbelievable. This is like Twilight Zone. Internet sales tax, call Congress immediately. Megabanks, ATF, true culprits behind Mexican drug and gun violence. Obama urges grand, uh, grad students to reject warnings about government tyranny. And when that's all we see happening is massive tyranny. Alex Jones calls on world press to cover Bilderberg 2013. I haven't even gotten to this yet. Uh, they're always... They're always... You know, blocking people getting into countries to cover Bilderberg because Bilderberg is basically so powerful. And they tried to stop me getting into Canada, but the media knew I was coming, so it blew up in their face. So then they were forced to release me. And I actually want to go. I'm buying the tickets. I'm coming. Uh, you know, why send crew when I can go myself? I mean, I just need, my wife's like, yeah, you got to go. And I go, okay. Everybody else says I got to go. But at the same time, I don't want to get on a plane and get there and be turned back. Or I don't want to, get, you know, get to the airport and, and, you know, right up there to get on the plane. They say no, like they've done Michael Savage and others. But if they do that, it'll only expose Bilderberg even more. And may actually b b break the media blockade here. So very important article with a lot of key photos and some of the past Bilderberg info. That's up on Infowars.com. Uh, so I hope that uh, you will get that out to everybody and help us on that. And I hope to see everybody. People always want me to come and speak in England or speak in Europe. Uh, I'm afraid to set up a speaking engagement because they probably won't let me in. Because I'm so evil. You know, I talk about the Declaration of Independence, and you know in England that's bad. But the people there are hungry for liberty. It's pretty funny that a lot of my ancestors come from England, and I may not be able to even get in the country. <laughs> for more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. 
We're just launching it. And I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com decided I'm doing the whole hour live in transmission. Now I'm going to be live tonight, 7 o'clock, InfoWars Nightly News, PrisonPlanet.tv for listing showtimes, streams, and more. But here's Tim Clemente, the FBI counterterrorism official, admitting, but like it's, you know, just, oh, we listened to all the phone calls. Well, this has already been admitted, but it just shows how illegal all this is. This is an illegitimate government. Here it is on CNN. Well, on the national security uh, side of the house for in the in the federal government you know we have assets there's lots of assets at our disposal throughout the intelligence community and also not just domestically but overseas those assets are, allow us to gain information and intelligence on things that we can't use ordinarily in a criminal investigation but are used for major terrorism investigations or counterintelligence investigations and you're not everything so, is recorded since the mid-1990s with your tax money and the people listening like Seabell Edmonds, she hears them commanding Al-Qaeda, running white slave rings, uh, running weapons, just like they run Al-Qaeda now. I'm going to explain to you. The people that run our government, that arrogant FBI guy all smiling, <laughs> we have assets. Yeah, we know you got assets, pal. We know all about them. And now you have people without counsel say they did it while they're sedated and you cut their throat out. I mean, these guys are creepy, man. This is mafia that's broken this country's back. They get hundreds of billions every few years and no bid contracts to spy on us. And they all go along with it. And they all think it's funny. They go, trust us. Yeah, right. You stole on the country blind. Now, I'm going to go to this next report. And we're going to go to break. We're going to come back and take your calls at 800-259-9231. What do you think about Adam Kokesh and an armed march? Will you be joining him? Do you have concerns like I do? 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231 specifically on the second American Revolution. Is it peaceful? What's going to happen? What do you think of what Kokesh said? I, I, I respect his, his, his guts. I agree with his right to do it. But is it a good idea? Because I could have done this anytime I wanted to, obviously. You've heard the callers over the years and had a big national story. Uh, but I know I'm so real, they might bust a cap in my button in the operation right there when I'm so effective beating them in the info war. I don't know. What do you think? 800-259-9231. That video, so that uh, Drudge can add it or whoever wants to for other news sites. I talked to him, by the way. It's his first video interview or audio interview that we just did last hour. That's going up at YouTube in the next hour. Infowars.com will post it pronto. So, uh, underlay, 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 Ariba, Ariba to Rob Dew right now. He's about to upload it. But first, let's go to this report that John Bowne and uh, Dan Badandi put together uh, showing MSNBC saying, Ron Paul's wrong. There was no martial law. Everybody loved what happened in Boston. So, here is that report. I'm David Knight with InfoWars Nightly News. Now, recently, Ron Paul was on the Alex Jones Show, and he expressed concern about the way the police conducted themselves. He had some pretty strong language. He called it martial law, and we agree. Governments are supposed to protect our liberties. Once they decide they're going to make us safe, economically and physically safe, uh, they can only do this by taking away our liberties. Those pictures really concern me. That is such a visual image when you see thousands and thousands of troops, and they weren't your local friendly policemen that were involved. I mean, can you imagine all these people being locked? They became prisoners. It was uh, accepted too easily. It was uh, martial law. But Lars O'Donnell took exception to that. 
And he very strongly called Ron Paul a liar repeatedly on his show for what he said about the way the police conducted themselves, going house to house, pointing guns at people in windows and houses, dragging them out of their houses at gunpoint, uh, going down the streets in armored personnel carriers with full police uh, riot gear. Wait, I want to show pictures okay. first. And okay. then I want to show some of the pictures of the Boston police. Okay, look at this. I mean, if, if this is what you have, why don't you invade a country? <laughs> show some of the other ones. I mean, go up to Canada, take their oil. Uh, <laughs> look at these. These are half tracks. These, I don't care what you, you might want to call it an urban assault vehicle, but we, this country is becoming a police state, and it is very troubling to me. We believe that's very excessive. We believe that that is setting a template for martial law to be gradually eased in, and so does Ron Paul. But Lawrence O'Donnell called him a liar. He said from the very beginning to say that this was forced is a lie, that the governor was just simply telling people to shelter in place, and it was a suggestion. Police don't need warrants. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. What a vile lie. There were no tanks and there were no police pointing their weapons at innocent citizens. Well, when the government points a gun at you and suggests that you do something, we call that force. And they may call it something else, but they're just playing with semantics. We wanted to add to the pictures that people have already seen, pictures that were already there when Lawrence O'Donnell called Ron Paul a liar. So we sent Dan Badandi to interview residents and tell us what they experienced during this excessive manhunt. And here are those interviews. A cop pointed his gun at me, and then they called SWAT in, and then SWAT came and picked me up by a shield, and they threw me in the back of a car and then dropped me off in the middle of Newton. So they dropped you off in the middle of nowhere, and what time of night was it? Uh, what time was that? Like five? Yeah. Broad daylight. Just dropped me off, took me out of the cuffs, and told me to walk. And when they uh, put the cuffs on you, did they read you your Miranda rights? Nope. So you were unlawfully detained from being on public property? Yeah. Did they ask to search your house? Um, they told me they were going to search the house. So they didn't ask you, they just told you? They told me they weren't coming in to search. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? They told us we had to leave, yes. One thing I was very, very upset about is that when we were leaving here, all my the lights were on in the house, TVs, you know, and um, back door, they had gone the back door down my basement. And they told me, I said, let me just close all my doors and lock up. And they said, no, they would do it. I came home. Back door was open. This is hours now later. Back door was open. Front door was open. Basement door was open. Lights were on. TVs were on. No one did anything. So they basically left your house unsecured with the doors wide open where nobody was home? Yes, they did. And you say there's bullet holes in your car here? Yes, this is a bullet hole here. Um, Are they going to try that quick? And... There's a bullet hole here. It shot out the window on the side there. And in my car, there's a bullet hole, as you can see. I don't know where it is. Maybe it's in the car somewhere. I have no <laughs> idea. But the back window's blown out and the side window's blown wow. out. What they did, they disrupted this entire world for a day. We initially got a report from the police department that it was voluntary searches. But then after talking to the residents, uh, we found out that they weren't asking if, if they could have permission to enter homes. They were just forcefully entering people's homes uh, to search. So did they knock at your door just walk in? They knocked the door, but you know what I mean? The door, they almost, they, they almost pushed the door through them. I mean. okay, and, uh, did they ask you to search a home at all, or they just did it? They just did it. You know, they just came in and uh, they're going through. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? Yes. Uh, we left, and they say, let's lock the doors. They say, no, no, we we'll take care of it. We we'll lock your doors and everything. We came home midnight, and everything was open. And nobody was around here. So they left your house also unsecured and wide open. Exactly. And nobody was around here. What takes anybody? Anybody can walk in. They mistreated the elderly then, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. you know, I didn't like that. You know, like I said, they tried to do the job, you know what I mean? You know. But uh, on this point here, I got very upset, very upset. And, uh, did they ask to search your house or they just searched it? 
Um, they wanted to search the house, but my grandma said nobody was in there, and then they proceeded to ask my grandma for my my uncle lives upstairs, and the house is a deadbolt, and my grandma said, you know, there's no one up there. I didn't hear anyone go up the stairs, but they still made her give the house key and unlocked it with that key and searched upstairs and all the way up to the attic. Well, they they um, didn't want to give the key back, but they ended up giving the key back. My grandma, they did. And did they command you at all any time to leave your home or stay in the home? Uh, so it was stay inside. But the thing overall that cut, caught my eye is that my friend on Franklin Street, um, lived across the street and the army people did a huge search in their garage um, but the, the, the boat was directly across the street they didn't search the boat not once they didn't even go around it that's, and that's where the younger brother was found that's where the suspect was and it's funny because the police didn't find him when they did the thing the person finally got to leave their house because they said everyone stay inside he left his house and saw the blood on the boat we you know had to go through multiple checkpoints and we were searched ourselves other journalists on the scene were told to lay on the ground as they were searched so it was a very very touchy very um, intense situation to be in matter of fact when we woke up a big shootout that was done from a Vietnam it was looked like a Vietnam so and the, those guns that were going left and right. <laughs> yeah, all your neighbor's houses got hit. Oh, we did do the door. Too. We got a stone door. They passed my stone and, door. And the other door is our and door. And the door. Oh, no, upstairs, yeah. I was a block in there. If I ever put four so, more feet on this side, yeah. it would have kept me on my bedroom. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice when you sleep inside. Yeah, <laughs> were guns pointed at you any time, and did they tell you to put your hands up in the air or anything? Not me, but my boyfriend. So your boyfriend had his hands up in the air, and they were searching him? Yes, because he came out to check his diesel in the back of his truck. They were pretty much right here in front of my house, and they were just shooting down that direction. Um, that went on for a couple minutes, and then there were there were two more booms, with the last one just really lighting the entire neighborhood up. Um, it yeah. shook the house, set off all the car alarms. And uh, did they make you put your hands up? Um, when we when we came out, we put our hands up, and they searched us. But other than that, we just walked down. The and did they ask you at all to search you? Um, yeah, they, they asked, they just, well, they told us that they were going to be searching us. And by the way, the police know what they did is illegal. And so they're saying, oh, everyone, uh, let us do this. And that's the type of emails and texts and things that I've been uh, seeing people saying out there. In fact, um, here's one from YouTube today. Are you serious? They are looking for a terrorist. In fact, you guys can even give me a document cam shot of this. I'll show the viewers. Are you serious? They are looking for a terrorist. What and how should they handle this? Let's explain for the something billionth times to the billions of people the importance. People are not special. Get the F out of the way as professionals are trying to to make things safe. You, you know this guy's a cop. They may not be nice teddy bears doing booty, but they are doing it. And then you go to the guy's channel, he's into superhero movies and cop movies, and he talks about how epic the new Superman is. Uh, here's his channel, Will Cass. Or he's a contractor for government. I mean, I've seen this a million times. Man of Steel, emotionally epic. <laughs> this is a child. Guaranteed, he goes, to, he goes to Iron Man, watches him fight terrorists, as they do every show, and really thinks that's real. That's a simulation for you, bud. The globalists have written books about it. They think you're stupid. Now, they've never done this in American policing or any other policing, lockdown, most of a city. And, and I saw them on the news going, everyone could be a suspect. They could have people aiding them. And a blonde-haired woman comes out of her house with her hands up. After she gets in the, off, the, off the step, she puts her hands down. And the cop goes and shoves her and goes, put them up! I mean, it is a bunch of nobodies on a power trip. Most police I know in cities would not act like that. Now, if you look like, I mean, it's like the cops in L.A. shooting up women in cars that weren't even the same car as the as Dorner. <clears throat> they're not out there facing real terrorists. The real thing they're facing is da is dangerous automobile wrecks and, and and some criminals. And it's just this whole we're soldiers, we're supermen, we're fighting this thing. And, and you notice in this guy's uh, comment, and there's a lot of these. 
are they are you serious they are looking for a terrorist the guy's automatically a terrorist because usa today said he is a terrorist this weekend no judge no jury he's sedated who even knows if he's alive and uh, they're telling us although he i mean they could grab me and say i i confessed what and how should they handle this let me explain for the nine four seven two three four seven two eight i mean just you know it's like a billion times to the billions of people the importance people are not special get the f out of the way as professionals are trying to make things safe see we're not special he is this person probably is a janitor nothing against being a janitor is very honest work but a janitor at a police department and like goes in and has coffee he's part of the team the you are not special. Government is special. Government is authority. Government is official. USA. USA. Uh, yeah, I got a 75 IQ. The Iron Man, he fights the, the terrorists. I was at Barton Springs yesterday laying there drying off after a swim a mile. And it's not even a lot. I'm trying to swim two miles next time I go. I'm so out of shape. And I'm sitting there and... I just listen to all the adult men around me going, yeah, he's got the thruster power. That's how he deals with it. Uh-huh. And their kids are talking about Iron Man. He's like, yeah, I like how he dealt with that one terrorist. Yeah. Yeah, of course, the terrorist. <laughs> that is what men do. I mean, I've sat there watching the Avengers, and the men will sit there in the uh, theater before it's going on going, man, this means so much to me. You get to see this. This is so. That's your manhood, a flying aircraft carrier? It ain't real. You and your family are being injected with soft kill, delayed kill, and binary bio weapons on record. Eco science, vital science are. Read it. Bioweapons are being injected into you. You want to be a superhero? The New World Order's here right now. People are preparing for an armed march on D.C. That they are the terrorists. That Washington, D.C. is the good guys. Washington, D.C. might as well be the floating fortress of doom or the, or the, the black pyramid orbiting the earth that the stinking aliens are in for all that matters. I mean, it's worse because it's our own species, and it's hard to get people. But the uh, the 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 White House was attacked, and Olympus has fallen, so that's why they can't have tours no more. Because the terrorists might try something. The criminals have committed so many crimes in government that now the sky is the limit. They intend to go all the way. I love this. People are not special. Get the F out of the way as professionals are trying to make things safe. They may not be nice teddy bears doing that, but they are doing it. <laughs> I mean, look at this. People are not special. Get the F out of the way. So your wife comes out, blonde head lady. Uh, the cop shoved her. Says, keep hands up, bitch. That good. You're not special. Uh, respect me. Respect me. And we talked to the people. You'd have like a 17-year-old out in their yard, look nothing like the guy. They pull you up, strip you down, drive you around, throw you out in another city. Uh, get out of the car. We the government, you not. <laughs> Never forget the video of the state police from our own squad car. 2001, Abby Martin, no, 2002. Maybe veteran, no criminal record. A checkpoint. They're searching cars. She goes, were you looking for somebody? No, it's a routine check. Oh, it's routine, so it's okay. It's like, we're going to stick you in a blender. It's routine, so it's all right. She goes, well, you can't search my car. And they go, get out of the car, then. I mean, their voice was actually like, all right, get out of the car, I'm handcuffing you. And then they get in the back of the car and they find a pocket constitution and they start going, <laughs> He's a look at this, I've never seen nothing like it. It's like the most unintentional comedy in the world. It'd be like if they found a daisy in a field and went, oh, it's so scary, what are we going to do? And they're going, I think she, we need to arrest her for this. I don't think this is legal. And the head one goes, I think it might be. That may have been what she's talking about, having rights. I mean, it's literally 
You know what? I'm going to say this. Mike Judge sends me text saying, hey, good show today, good this and that. And then I'm, he's like, oh, come on, soon as a couple of weeks. Mike Judge, you need to come on, man, because idiocracy that you made is exactly where we're already at. Of course, I don't call him that often. I just got to bug the hell out of him until he does it. Now, if I want to go listen to Weldon Henson play music and drink beer with Mike Judge, I guess I can get that done. But see, Mike, I admire you and want to get you on air. I don't want to go to a honky-tonk and drink beer with Weldon Henson, even though I love his country music. Because then I got to drive home. I'm joking. I went out and saw Weldon a couple weeks ago. It's always good to see his wife, too. What a sweetie. Water is for toilets. Drink Brondo, the thirst mutilator. And President Macho Camacho. The Dominator Annihilator Monster Truck. Oh, God, help me. We're going to go to break and come back with your calls. I don't even know what to do anymore. I have entered the Twilight Zone. Because that's what I see, like, you little people need to get out of the way and let the professionals handle it. The professionals never locked down, you know, 80% of a city and came up pointing guns at women and children. And, oh, oh, and, and then families are walking out there pointing it right at them. Like, like, and, and you see the cops' eyes. They're all, like, on power trips and, and, and like, look all crazy. You see looks of cops going, like, and it's like getting all into the pageantry and the media and their movie stars. I mean, it's mentally ill narcissism. And they come up to like AP reporters and say, "We will kill you if you don't if you don't stop filming," because folks, they were given the word, "This will bring everybody down. These guys have got to die, got to kill the patsies." We shot into that boat with all those machine guns, and he's not dead. He's oh my god, the media's on it. We can't kill him. I was listening to the scanner. Oh my gosh, the media's on it. Abort, abort. Then all of a sudden, the guy gets up. It's all right. Bring him into custody and cut his larynx out. He'll confess. <laughs> He'll do what it takes. Get rid of the vocal cords. That's how we deal with zizits. Pro Pure is introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by Pro Pure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. All right, I'm going to go right to your phone calls or I never will. Some of the news up on InfoWars.com that we need to get out is Alex Jones calls on World Press to cover Bilderberg 2013. Please get that out to everyone uh, ASAP. We've got other big breaking news up at InfoWars.com. And in the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to have the first six, seven minutes of the Adam Kokesh World Exclusive interview uh, going up on InfoWars.com. Uh, and PrisonPlanet.com, and we'll send it on. Not that I expect it to be posted. He already has a link to us today on the bullet story, but to the mighty, the mighty DrudgeReport.com. The bane of the establishment, the bane of the New World Order, the high mountain fortress of DrudgeReport.com. Uh, 
uh, U.S. Senator Big Sis Ammo uh, buying ammo to dry up supply. Hey, will somebody run me my cell phone in here? I know they had it out there putting apps on it for me, but somebody run that into me. Thanks. Uh, right now, let's go to uh, Sean in Canada. You're on the air. Sean, welcome to the airwaves, sir. Hi, Alex. Uh, nice to speak to you again. Nice to speak to you, my friend. I just wanted to call. It's my second time calling. Recent Prison Planet TV member. I've uh, shared that membership, and I woke up a friend of mine, an engineer, who had never seen World Trade Center 7 before and was floored when he saw the video. And so uh, the message of liberty is percolating and spreading through Canada. And I just want to let you know that uh, you're doing a great job. And I want to agree with what Adam Kokesh is doing. I think while you're right, it might be dangerous, and we're dealing with criminals in Washington. Uh, th these people can spin uh, whatever they want out of whole cloth, or they can piggyback on uh, real events. Uh, they, whatever they want to do, they're going to do it. And the time for action um, is now, <clears throat> if not a long time ago. So I agree with what he's doing. I wish him luck, and I hope uh, nothing bad happens. But uh, I, I commend him for his bravery, as you have. The other thing I want to say is uh, Ashley Jessica. Um, I'm a friend of hers. She, uh, she was so central to the opt-out and film campaign, and she is trying to raise money to go to Bilderberg and, uh, <clears throat> and protest. And I just want to uh, give a shout-out to her and, and encourage all of her supporters on Twitter and out there in cyberspace to donate to the cause to help that girl uh, go fight the good fight. And Absolutely. And, and on top of that, everyone in England especially, we have a giant audience in Wales and in England and in Northern England and in Scotland and in Northern and Southern Ireland. Uh, and I just want to see everybody there at the Grove in Northeast London. It's, it's a suburb, uh, no, no, north, Northwest of London. Uh, and, and all the details are up on Infowars.com. Everybody needs to be there uh, because they may be able to stop me getting in. Who knows, they haven't done that yet, but they, they're more authoritarian all the time. Uh, but we'll see what happens. We now have members of parliament in the EU and in the UK uh, that are listeners of the show uh, and that support us. So we'll uh, we'll see what comes out of that. Thank you for the call, Sean. Frank in Louisiana, Gun March, what's your take on it? Yes, uh, Alex, you know, it's great to mine, great too many of the ages. Thomas Jefferson and, and the indomitable George Washington said that uh, the Second Amendment Washington called liberty's teeth. And Thomas Jefferson said its main purpose was as a last resort against government tyranny. Now, uh, the Supreme Court of U.S. versus Cruikshank stated that the Second Amendment has no other effect than to restrict the powers of the national government. That's the Supreme Court said that. And that's what we're doing here, is we're trying to restrict this tyrannical government who has a literal president who called himself a dictator when he violated the war clause, the most dangerous clause, that only constant, only the, the Congress. That's right. He said three times in letters and in speeches and had the Joint Chiefs tell Congress that I can launch wars under U.N. authority. It's worse than the president becoming a dictator and saying, I choose to do this like Santa Ana of Mexico. That's, that's treason. But to say I am under a foreign power's direction is unprecedented. Frank, thanks for the call. Uh, let's uh, talk to Greg in Utah listening on KYAH. Uh, 540 a.m. Uh, Greg, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yeah, you know, I get a real sick feeling in my gut about this, Alex, and I'll tell you why. Because these guys easily plant enough patsy in their armed patsy ready to, to turn the whole thing south real quick. And uh, because of that, I just get a real sick feeling because I know that they're, they, you know, this is something that they'll take advantage of. Yeah, no, I get the same feeling. But th that's because of the danger. If we know what to watch for, if we know what to look for, even if they try it, we'll uh, expose them. And again, Kokesh kept saying, I'm glad you agree with this. I'm glad you endorse this. That's not really what I said. I said, I'm warning people this can be very dangerous. You have the constitutional right to do this. I admire your courage. I don't think he's an agent or a bad guy. I was laying all those provisos in heavy. Okay, there's a reason I haven't done this. My gut says you are having, I mean, look, people couldn't handle me getting in the Redcoats' face uh, and going, Morgan, you want our guns? Shut up. You're going to cause a second American revolution. Even mainline conservatives freaked out on that. They're so weak. <laughs> but then I think, well, maybe the answer is get so radical, because that's not radical. That's America, to, to like move the Overton window towards liberty. We've moved so far to collectivism and weakness 
and patheticness. And, and look, everything is 2014. Because if we don't get more Tea Party real Republicans elected that are being demonized by the Republican and Democratic leadership, who've circled the wagons, they're going to get the Democrats, and Republicans may throw it and give them trifecta, House, Senate, uh, and uh, the presidency. And if they get that in, ladies and gentlemen, there's different trifectas. You could also have the courts as well. But if they get that, uh, look, there's, they're always like, we need a unified thing. No, unified is what causes disasters. One of the things that's made America great is competing criminal factions. The founders knew what they were doing. That's why I watched uh, Killing You Softly, I think it's the name of the Brad Pitt movie. I watched that Friday night in a hotel room in Dallas coming back to Austin. And at the end of the movie, Brad Pitt says Thomas Jefferson was a piece of garbage. Thomas Jefferson was a filthy person uh, who just wanted slaves. Thomas Jefferson tried to get slavery outlawed in the uh, first constitution. They were in that age. There was slavery going on all over the world. Most whites that came to this country were indentured servants uh, and sharecroppers, uh, uh, one step above the, the regular slaves politically, in some cases even worse off. Thomas, and, and they go, he just wanted to have sex with his slave girls. Thomas Jefferson basically made the slaves his family and then on his death they were freed. And I'm not defending what Thomas Jefferson did. He grew up in that time. Thomas Jefferson uh, then wrote the documents that were the idea that then fully realized led to a more equality. And now they've taken equality and turned it back and made it a tyranny instead of a real equality. But I'm I'm ranting. Anything else, Craig? Yeah, one, one piece of news uh, I just read, and I'm going to forward you the article, a, a lawmaker saying that, uh, that President Obama never qualified to be president because of his uh, not being a natural-born citizen status. He's, gonna, he's this so-called uh, first de facto president we've ever had. But I'm going to forward that article to you. Um, I agree. I understand exactly what you, were, you said to him on your response. Uh, yeah, you did, you know, uh, you were very clear about that. So I'm glad you made those points. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I like Adam. He's a good guy. But, you know, after, the, after that segment, I said, okay, bye, we'll talk to you soon. He goes, you know, I like you, Alex. I don't agree with everything you you know stand for, but I think, and I was like, dude, I don't need a qualifier. I mean, I don't agree with everything you do. It's, it's fine. I mean, you know, it's like there's all these personalities in media. I don't care. Okay, I care when they lie and say they're not buying bullets because they're a pack of criminals. The enemy is the globalist. The enemy is the private federal reserve. The enemy is Warren Buffett getting 150 billion dollars or more. It's more like 300 billion, but if you go back, it's 44.5 billion in 2008. Another. 30-something million the next year. We'll pull up, show people McClatchy. They say 150. And that's like a two-year-old article. I mean, the numbers I've got are 300 billion of my tax money, and then he's making record profits, ripping me off and my kids, and my children's birthright. I mean, if you don't get upset about that, you're crazy. I'll be honest, I've had cars stolen twice. Now, there it is, Warren Buffett on AIG, $150 billion bailout. Ha ha, he told you so. He, was the, he got 40-something billion just out of that but the point is is that i had my car stolen i appreciate your call greg i had my car stolen twice once in dallas and another time in austin and the police both times wouldn't even come out and i was like okay i'll just you know i got, I got insurance i'll get another one but it was a big hassle imagine people that can't afford uh you know the full coverage people that i, I, I had a lady i talked to uh, who was at the uh, baths, you know, we went and took uh, in, in Hot Springs. And I got a little massage, had him on about five months, really helped a knot in my back. And she had had all her guns stolen, and everything she'd been saving up since she got out of the Air Force 10 years before. And, you know, that, I mean, that's why stealing is really a big deal to people that don't have anything. And that's why in the old days you could execute somebody for stealing a horse. Because you took somebody's horse, they might die. And, 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 you know, I really hate criminals that steal from poor people or, or lower middle class. I mean, I really, really, you steal some kid's bike when they're not going to be able to get another one. And, and then I think about the government stealing my kid's birthright. I, I get mad hearing about people having their kid's bike stolen. I've had my bike stolen out of my garage multiple times. Leave it open five minutes taking groceries in or something, they steal your bikes. I don't care if you're in Westlake or South Austin. I've had it happen both places. And... That makes me mad. The violation. The violation.
But then I think about how they put GMO that they know kills the animals that eat it over time. Organ failure. I mean, and then they brag and write books how they're doing it to us. And I have to look at them up there spying on us and getting my tax money to do it. And they're creepy and they, they're on power trips, man. And then I'm like, everybody's freaked out and scared of what Kokesh is doing. And my knee-jerk reaction was that as well. And I'm going to put warnings out. But I tell you, I feel like I should be there because it is dangerous. You know, this is the time to put everything on the line. This is the time to up the game. This is the time to commit. And, I, and you know, he was like, I hope you'll be there being armed. Like, like oh, if you're not armed, Alex, you know, you're not, you don't have courage. I don't think he meant it like that, but, you know, like, hey, come on, go all the way. My issue is most of the time I'm not armed. When I, people say, don't you have a concealed carry? I have never had time to go, go, go get it. I can carry guns if I want in Texas. When Sometimes I do carry a rifle in my car. Not most of the time because my kids are in there. Not that they don't know not to touch it. It's just a lot of stuff goes on. I got a gun right here underneath the table. But when I go out to public rallies and things, I could have carried guns in Virginia at Bilderberg, and there were guys out there with holstered guns. Let me tell you, the police really got respect then. But it's, it's almost not like I'm showing off that I'm not scared to be killed. I am not going to live in that type of fear. I mean, I don't want to die. I love life so much I'd never commit suicide. But if somebody does kill me, I hope they get me right between the eyes. I, you know, I hope my whole brain gets blown out because I don't want to be paralyzed or something. That's the kind of stuff I'm afraid of. I'm not afraid of dying. Man, this life is like five seconds long. I remember being three years old playing in the backyard. And looking up into the sky and the sun and just feeling the presence of God. And now I'm almost 40 years old. And I'm getting older and, you know, my shoulders hurt and everything else. I can't imagine what it's like to be 80 years old, incredible pain. I mean, I just know, like, I'm going to be 80. It's going to be like, bam, I'm 80. And then, bam, I'm dead. I mean, you know what? You don't have power over me. I'm not afraid anymore. It's not like I even want to be there with a gun to say, look, I've got a gun. I want to be there without a gun so that if somebody strikes me down, it's that even more obvious. And I want to be able to document it as like an observer. I even wear a shirt saying observer because that's the real weapon. Those video cameras I'm going to have are the real weapon systems. I'm, I would be streaming live just like when we are at Bilderberg this year in England. Those are the weapon systems, and Rockwell knows we're winning, and he sees the danger in where this is going, so he's against it. Plus, he's a big anti-violence guy. You know, that's all he talks about. He just, you know, he's real. But we'll see what happens, because, it, it, you know, Kokesh is not doing that. He's doing it as a stunt for liberty, a provocateur of liberty, as he called himself. But, I mean, he, he'll do it. He'll do it. And I have always said it's not a good idea because they'll provocateur something. But see, that was a long time ago. So we'll see what happens. I personally don't want to be around the TSA. It's not that they scare me. It's that it's so stupid. They know who I am. The government runs Al-Qaeda. And I'm scared to blow up and get arrested because I don't want to be arrested because I don't like being around it and all the power tripping. The, the shallow people that just get off on exercising power for no reason over and over again. I like to exercise an oil paint brush to paint a masterpiece. I like to exercise uh, open cave diving and uh, spear a big old fish and go cook it on the side of the beach. I'd like to execute seeing a great sunset. I like to execute seeing your kids and my kids grow into a great future. Not sit there and just, I've got the power. I can make you do something. <laughs> I mean, I'm so sick of it. All these nobodies who, who, who use the government as their power, and then Obama's up there talking about how great it is. Makes me want to throw up. William in Virginia, what's your take on all this? Uh, hello, Mr. Jones. Um, I remember I called you're, you're on a speakerphone, and I need you to get off of it, or I'm going to have to let you go. I'm not on speakerphone, sir. I, I got to move on. So I just I got to be able to hear people. I mean, I just, it's like, it's totally echoey and I can't hear you. Blake in Virginia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex. Yes, sir. This is your P, this is your PI videographer from Bilderberg last year. Yes, I remember you gave us great video, brother. What do you think of all this? I will be there with my five video cameras playing lifeguard to make sure that nothing bad happens. If you want to come, 
I will come to Austin and help Richard drive you up here. I'm yeah. going to be stopping in Austin here the next month or so to see you anyway. Well, no, I'll fly up there. I mean, I'm going to go to Bilderberg, too. And, again, we win either way. I hope I get in and cover it. But if England blocks me, then it's a new story and we win as well. I mean, it's like engaging is winning. Sitting back and doing nothing is losing. Go ahead. Absolutely. But I, I'm, I'm at the point now I'm just about Popeye. I've had all I can stand and I can't stand this no more. Uh, I, I see where Adam is going with this thing. I understand his take on it. But we need to have as many video cameras there as absolutely possible to cover every angle just to make sure that nothing bad happens. No, I agree. We should have we should have 10 video cameras for every gun. And believe me, that will intimidate the system a lot more than the guns. I, I travel both ways, sir. My video camera is my primary. No, I know. I know. I know I've seen you. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, remember, I said, you know, the mantra of the infantry, shoot, move, and communicate. We need to communicate so we don't have to move so we never ever have to shoot absolutely god bless and uh, again adam kokesh has every right to be doing what he's doing um it's committed he's not going to back off now so we need to make the best of it uh i have chosen not to do what he's doing you've heard over the years it's the perennial or the perpetual call every week we need an arm march on washington 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 and that did bring down Ceausescu in Romania, and the military decided not to shoot on them. It's kind of like the V for Vendetta recreates that. Everybody marches past the troops. The difference is the globalists are smart. They're not going to just let the troops mow people down. They would sh have one of their agents do it, shoot people like the Munich Beer Hall purge, where Hitler tried to march on the government, not like he was a good guy, but that's an old tactic. And they just shot the group up from, from within, claimed it was, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, the, you know uh, the group doing it, and locked Hitler's butt up. But then British intelligence and others financed the Germans to let him out, making the leader. If you didn't know that, you haven't read all the secret wartime reports that have been declassified. Um, but, um, oh yeah, they set Hitler up, set him in power, just like they set the Soviets up. Carol Quigley writes about that in Tragedy and Hope. Let's go to another call. Sebastian in Tennessee. What's your take on this, Sebastian? And hey, uh, Alex. I was calling because uh, yesterday in, I live in Memphis, Tennessee, and there was a big music festival here. And I want to let you know the presence of the TSA. They also had a explosive canine. Uh, oh, I know. There. I said there'll be public bombings, and they're going to roll TSA out everywhere. L and let me grab it. Now I have USA Today, RR Stadium Safer, TSA and Army searching people now. Yes, this, this is how they take over. So now there's an attack on a grocery store. They're going to have to search you there. It's, but the borders are wide open. This is, and, and the government runs Al-Qaeda. It's total crap. They're the and terrorists, they also, folks. You know, as I was going through there, they had SWAT people. And I, and I went on to take pictures just to document it. But I, SWAT people walk in there with their dogs, you know, looking for something. And it, it's just insane. I mean, it made no sense, you know. Well, you got to remember, three people died, so America has to get rid of all its freedom. That's what you do. Everybody's guilty except the government. The government was all over that bombing. And even if they weren't, I'm, I lose my rights now, and, and they're training us to be prisoners because of one event. Send us the photos. Show tips at InfoWars.com. And by the way, if you work um, in video editing or as a journalist, uh, or in camera, uh, or as internet sales, because I'm sick of just running ads locally, jobs at infowars.com. That's the right email, right? Jobs at infowars.com. I meant to add that for everybody, because uh, I just want to, I want to just staff up now. I want to go all in and just turbocharge, uh, you know, as much as we can, because there's so many projects I want to get done. I got like, probably like 100 projects partially finished I never did. Probably more than 100. It's, I can't remember. I was thinking about this morning, I could list like 40 of them. I was sitting there writing them down. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll just work more to get out more. 7 o'clock tonight, prisonplanet.tv. Will you please work for liberty? This is not an exercise here. This is the real deal. Will you please spread the word about prisonplanet.tv? Visit infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. 
When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 